On December 27, 1892, Livingstone and Biddle College, now known as Johnson C. Smith University, played in Salisbury, North Carolina, with Biddle winning 5-0. Over time, HBCU football has evolved. HBCU football's popularity continues to rise. Millions attend games each year and millions more watch on television. The HBCU bands provide some of the top entertainment in the country. Over that time, some of the best players to ever play in the National Football League played at HBCUs. Every Monday through Friday on the HBCU Football Daily Podcast, national radio and television host Donald Ware takes a look at what's happening in HBCU football and talks with coaches, players, administrators, and media about the season. Make sure you join the conversation on social media now. Here's your host, Donald Ware. You've got it locked to the HBCU Football Daily Podcast for today, Friday, August 25th. I'm Donald Ware. It's Friday! Of course, that means it's time for the HBCU National Game of the Week to preview that as the HBCU football season kicks off on tomorrow and the HBCU football or National Football Game of the Week is South Carolina State against Jackson State in the MEAC SWAC Challenge on ABC. This is a game that's going to be the, not only televised on ABC, it's a national, nationally televised game. So it's going to be a big game. And it's a rematch of the 2021 Celebration Bowl. Before we even get into that, if you didn't know, South Carolina State head football coach Buddy Pugh announced on yesterday that the 2023 season will be his last season of coaching football. So we'll see how that plays into uh, the South Carolina State players. You know, what 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 are the emotions behind that? Um, a lot of these guys have been with the program for a lot of years, and I think that's where we'll, where we'll start with South Carolina State because this is a much more experienced team, a much more mature team. It's a team that has about 12 players or so that are graduate players, including its quarterback, Corey Fields, who seems like Corey Fields has been with the program forever. This is the issue uh, with South Carolina State. You look at coming off that emotional victory, and and by the way, with respect uh, to, well, we'll we'll get back to that with, with Buddy Pugh, but I look at it from this vantage point. This was a team in 2021 that ended up winning the HBCU National Championship, um, defeated South Carolina State in the Celebration Bowl, which not many many people thought that South Carolina State could win that football game. And it, it it's almost a situation where South Carolina State last year, because you talk about a three and eight record, um, there was a little bit of complacency. And, and Buddy Pugh has talked about that a little bit, even amongst not only the players, but he himself. And I think they want to right that ship in 2023. Because the fact of the matter is, when you looked at South Carolina State last year, uh, much like I look at North Carolina Central this year, it's a team that is more than capable of repeating as HBCU national champs, which I thought South Carolina State had a good chance at doing that last year. Not only did that not happen, but the Bulldogs only won three football games last year. You're talking about a team that brought back almost everybody, okay, almost everybody from the year before, yet won three football games. Now, complacency isn't the only issue. The Bulldogs did have quite a few injuries from last year. I think what's interesting to me about this edition of the South Carolina State Bulldogs, the fact that most of those guys – Okay, from last year's team and really from the 2021 team come back this year. So you have an experienced bunch. Yes, I think a loss like a B.J. Davis at linebacker. um, He went into the portal. I believe he's at ECU, if I'm not mistaken. But I think I mean that's a huge loss when you're talking about uh, for South Carolina State. But the Bulldogs believe that that's something that. Uh, they can kind of overcome from a defensive perspective. You know, when I look at your bookends, 
Patrick Godbolt, who still was a first team all MIAC guy on last year, uh, Jablonski Green, um, who was a first team guy going back a couple of years ago, coming into the preseason um, on last year. These are two edge rushers that definitely can get it done. Uh, you look in that secondary, there's definitely um, uh, some experience in the secondary as well. And then the linebacker core, I mean, Buddy Pugh really likes this linebacker core uh, as well, even though there's no B.J. Davis. I look at this team offensively. You know, certainly when you look at a guy like a um, like Shaq, who's gone at the wide receiver position, Shaq Davis, he's with the the Saints, as a matter of fact, doing pretty well. But, I mean, he he's a guy that's gone. But you got a guy like a, a Corey Fields that's back. You've got a couple of offensive linemen that come back. Eric Brown, Nick Tasty, Cam Johnson. These guys have experience. And so with that, I think this is a team that has experience. And I think it's a team that's humble. It's a, it's a team that's humbled from 2000. You know, last year, I mean, Three football games won from a team that was HBCU national champions going back to 2021. So I think you have a team that is humbled. I think it's the right mindset for South Carolina State. Um, and there may be a bit of motivation, okay? Because if you're South Carolina State, and especially that you have those players that I mentioned, a lot of those players from the 2021 team that are coming back, um, I mean, I, I think the Bulldogs left no doubt with the score, 31 to 10 victory over over Jackson State two years ago. But you want to show um, not that that game was a fluke, but you want to show we can beat these guys. Um, and so that's, I think, the mindset of South Carolina State and maybe sort of a mindset of win one for the Gipper type of deal with this being Buddy Pugh's last season. When I look on the other side at Jackson State, what immediately comes out jumps out to me, uh, uh, of course, amongst um, the obvious, which we'll talk about a little bit more, but in terms of personnel, over 70 new players to the Jackson State football program this year. That's a lot of players. So, you you know, you you they've had spring, um, they've had fall to really try to develop some cohesiveness uh, as a unit, but that's a lot of players uh, new to a program. Obviously, you've got a new coach in T.C. Taylor, an alum of Jackson State. I think one of the advantages is, is a new coaching staff for the most part. I think one of the advantages for T.C. Taylor is he's, he's an alum and he's been there um, the last three or four years. And so with that being said, I think that um, sort of helps at least from some of the holdovers for Jackson State. Unfortunately, there aren't really um, a whole lot of holdovers. I think, um, you know, the big thing with Jackson State is who will start at quarterback. Now, T.C. Taylor said this is going to be a game time decision, but you've got Jason Brown, Zy McDonald, and Jacobian Morgan who are all battling for this quarterback spot. Uh, I think if you talk about experience, okay, out of these three quarterbacks, who has the most experienced. All three of them are transfers. The thing about Zion McDonald, uh, he was at Louisiana Lafayette the last couple of years. He only played in one game in his whole career at Lafayette. Um, you know, if I look at uh, Jacobian Morgan, uh, you know, he, he was at Syracuse. He had some time uh, there, but I think the most experienced of the quarterbacks is Jason Brown because he had some time at Virginia Tech he had some time at South Carolina where he actually played um, a, quite a few games. So I think, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know, uh, but I think for me, the advantage would go uh, to a guy like a Jason Brown. So we'll see. They've got an all world, you know, they've got an all world tight end, um, meaning uh, Jackson State, who either of those three quarterbacks can throw the football to in DJ Stevens. This is a young man that caught in excess of 30 passes last year, which uh, is a lot for a tight end, but he's also a good blocker uh, as well. And this is a team overall in Jackson State that has 20 or about 20 FBS transfers. Now, that doesn't always translate. Uh, just because you played in an FBS uh, doesn't translate into uh, being 
a, a, a success at the FCS level. And, you know, a lot of the FBS transfers that Jackson State has um, don't have a lot of experience. That said, you know, I'm really looking at this Jackson State defense because the quarterback is a question mark. And then not only that, I think the wide receiver core is a bit of a question mark as well. But you've got some experienced players on that defensive side of the football. Uh, ECA's is Guthrie, the safety, played at Delaware State. Guy was really, really good. Um, Isaac Peppers, a linebacker, played at Arkansas Pine Bluff, was really, really good. Um, and then you've got some other pieces on the defensive side of the football uh, for Jackson State as well. In terms of a prediction for this football game, um, I'm going with experience uh, in this football game, meaning experience on the field, experience in uh, with respect to the coaching staff. Um, I think it's going to be somewhat of a competitive game because Jackson State's going to come play. And this is an important game for Jackson State because next week, Jackson State has to play against Florida A&M, which is not only a conference game, it's a division game. It's really a game that could decide the uh, Eastern Division of the SWAC next week. I'm going to go with South Carolina State in this football game over Jackson State. Your thoughts, you can hit me up via Twitter or hit us up via Twitter at box to row B-O-X-T-O-R-O-W, on the weekend edition of box to row I'm going to talk more about the legacy of Buddy Pugh. Also, T.C. Taylor, the head football coach at Jackson State, going to join us on the program, and we're going to go around HBCU football, talk to uh, various media members around the country that cover HBCU football and get various perspectives from the CIAA, SIAC, MEAC, and the SWAC. Don't forget to tell a couple of friends about the HBCU Football Daily Podcast where you can watch on the Box to Row YouTube channel. You can also listen uh, at BoxToRow.com as well as iHeartMedia.com as well. Enjoy your football games. Um, as a matter of fact, and before we go, we'd be remiss, or I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the other two football games that are taking place this weekend. Langston opens the season against Mid-America Nazarene. So Langston looking to bounce back from a six and four season on last year. And Florida Memorial is on the road in West Virginia taking on Bluefield. Have a wonderful weekend. And I'll talk with you on Monday. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the HBCU Football Daily Podcast. You can also listen to the podcast at BoxToRow.com, iHeartMedia, or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to get your HBCU football fix on Box to Row with Donald Ware each weekend on the radio station near you. And on Sirius XM on HBCU, Channel 142. And on ESPNU Radio on Sirius XM, Channel 84. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at box to row for the latest in HBCU football. And don't forget to tell a friend.